ana KKD o de babo ntin se sika besia gana ebo no ekobu nkofo bi mu accounts mu e ma onkofo mu mu eyeye na ekom ade oman gana na ensemu o de betu dwa no ye ensemu a emu odu yi pa eno kwatena national television so ene kan e which me say o ne factor o de e kasa na okasa wie no po adom o kyeren so aba abonten aba ye no touch screen no e wo so aba ye analysis e wo ho ye ntie ensemu a eye kkd e kan ye ansa na yabo video no ankasa o for company getting richer was gana guest pora kkd films Victoran broadcaster Kwesi Chain Dakwa, known as KKD, has cited the Minister for Finance, Kenofuriata, over what he says is conflict of interest. According to him, the minister is benefiting, uh, benefiting at the expense of the country. I read a report yesterday that broke my heart. I saw how much Ghana owns, but I also found that apparently the Minister of Finance company or former company is a transaction advisor to the my to the monies that we borrow. So as Ghana gets for the minister of finance company or former company, a uh, guest richer, he stated when he appeared on a guest as a GTV break, uh, breakfast show program, describing the situation as unacceptable. KKD accused Parliament of also following failure to defend the interests of the country by allowing such a practice to uh, to foster. In this, is this how we want to continue in this country? Do we want to elect people into office, give them their uh, pay and their perks, and also allow them and their friends and their companies or their former companies to be a very beneficiary of those uh, for the worst of the country? This is not only about the finance minister of uh, finance minister. This is about parliament. Parliament, you must also be ashamed of yourself. You have failed the people of Ghana because I don't think from the time of Nkrumah date, whoever is the minister of finance should be benefiting f every time our country goes out to borrow money. Uh, this is this uh, is this what is happening? Uh, question Obusayano. He further uh, bemused how Ghanaians, including parliament, have rendered and become comfortable with the situation. Enti in some way, Eba Park KKD Edible Two Jano. Young court na young court ye in some crop or tinya or kaye, a mra or cot na a ye GTV so na or can etre gana for, says si kaye borrowing me bribe, a ba a crum gana hono. A e financial advisor, a ye finance minister, the company, and as in the former company, or mumu en yesika na a com eddy or my gana. We are not bought a video na a year poor. I don't watch them so at Nanu di a barbatum. I watch a chimu set at the crop of Tinako first and same way ban or non in Chilimuno. My bon so at the account. Yen Tien Sema KKD, Eddie Tuja, Emra, na or T a year GTV. I read a report yesterday that broke my heart. I saw how much Ghana owes, but I also found that apparently the Minister of Finance's company or former company is a transaction advisor to the monies we borrow. Mm -hmm. So as Ghana gets poorer, the Minister of Finance's company or former company gets richer. Mm -hmm. Is this what we want to continue in this country? Do we want to re elect people into office, give them their pay and their perks, and then allow them and their friends and their companies or their former companies to be the very beneficiaries of the woes of our country? This is not only about the Minister of Finance. This is about Parliament. Parliament, you must be ashamed of yourself. You have failed the people of Ghana. Because I don't think from the time of Nkrumah to date, whoever is the Minister of Finance should be benefiting every time our country goes to borrow money. Is that what happened under everybody in this country? What precedent are we setting? Yesterday when I read the report, I was so broken. And I was like, do people know this? So I called four different people, some in civil society, some in government, some in the former government. And I said, oh, but this is general knowledge. And I'm like, it's general knowledge and parliament thinks it's okay. So whoever wins the next election will also set up their own companies and be the transaction advisors when we go and take a loan. What is wrong with us as a people? So the person's motive for even going for a loan for me now, it's not clear. 
Because every time we take a loan, their company makes money. Does this make sense to us as a people? Look, we have leaders of industry, some who have been, you know, deprived of their finances. And in the meantime, the people who are sitting in power are stealing us blind. And all people can tell me is, oh, but this is general knowledge. What a shame. What a damn shame. When they are out of power, will they want whoever comes into power to repeat what they are doing? This is not NDC MPP. Parliamentarians, you are supposed to help us protect the public purse. You can't just go and sit there and vote, I am MPP, I am NDC. Vote your conscience what are you and, vote, and vote your constituents. What are you expecting the MPs to do? The MPs? Mm -hmm. But you cannot become the transaction advisor for going to take loans when you are the Minister of Finance. How is that possible? They are the legislators. If they won't speak up about it for the whole country, to, but for me taking time to read this, this much over the weekend and yesterday, I wouldn't know the details of this. Well, this so yes. now go and bring all the loans we have taken and show us all the transaction advices and see whether they have links to the presidency or the people who are the ministers or the people who are in legislature. Why are we doing this to ourselves? What kind of nonsense is that? Hey, if there's a conf the conflict of, of interest, conflict issues, of interest is uh, where it starts. So, so Shrad should be on the ball on this one. And where are they? Where are they? Look, right now, Ghana has become each one for himself, God for us all. I was speaking to one of my staff yesterday. He says, "Boss, I went to buy gas. Fourteen kilo cylinder now is one hundred and fifty-two Ghana cities. One hundred and fifty Ghana cities to fill the cylinder. Two Ghana cities for the rubber." When I take 152 Ghana cities out of my 1,400, how much is left? Now water is going up. Electricity is going up. And some people who we have put into positions of authority are raping the country. Why? Why? You are leaving it for your children, and your children know you are doing this, and your children will come and tell other people's children that, mo papa, mo bra. because you were stealing from the people. So those people whose parents did not steal from the people will be suffering. And your foolish children will come and tell those children, Mo papa and mo bra. They'll be, Wo mo papa in yesika. What, what is this? And nobody wants to talk about it. Because if you talk about it, they will, they will impoverish you. Hey, Masa. Obi and Kumwa. Wa obi If nobody kills you, you will die your own natural death. No, that's it. Thank you very much, Chrissy. <laughs> Um, went from ghost names swiftly to conflict of interest, but that's how it happens on this show. Which is worse, that yeah. conflict of interest it's or the ghost worse, names? Definitely. How much definitely. are they taking from those ghost Zero names? It's bad, it bad. It but there are things that are worse, and those things are being committed by the people that we have elevated into positions of authority to be our guardians, to be our servants, and, and through serving us, we elevate them even higher. But are they serving us, or are they serving themselves and their friends and their children? Okay, wait, eh, hey, and someone, eh, hey, KKD, Eddie Betuja. Now, on the Betuja, no, Mahunu say, eh, hey, poor Adum Ochre. What tam, eh, hey, ne computer, and on also, or didn't you move, Abba, a fa case away home. You go to your poor Adum Ochre, and so, eh, and she won also, eh, the buy, eh, fa, eh, allegations, a hodwa, papa, it national television, now, kai, a mood, ye pa, because, eh, we need, eh, facts, now, me, also, and go better TV, so crack as I same way. What you may not be my better TV, so, ne, dear. Now you say, yeah, Samoa, eh, who ye pa? Yen tie in Samoa, po, Adam Ochin, so, Eddie Betuja, a mra, or cotton, and a task screen, so, na a ja, or de in sam, a ma, a yenu crum, Ghana for no. Po Adam Ochin, yen tie away. The focus tonight is as a country, young people, however old you are, this is the narrative of uh, broadcast legend Kwesi Chedakwa. He's concerned about data banks' involvement in supporting governments to borrow money since 2017. He's not the only one who has expressed that concern. Other people have said it. So tonight we're going to go into the history of borrowing. And then my favorite part I keep saying is that oh, Papa Mobra, when we finish, we'll put the story of data bank out. And then you can answer the question and confirm no more data bank, no more Bobra, and answer man Bobra. Um, we are crown for and ask someone you are crown for. Who we'll answer that question? No problem. We'll show you the, the details and then you can answer the question yourself. So my first slide is this one. Now this is a um, Eurobond issue 
from 2014 to 2021. Now, so what is your bond issue? Those of us who are not finance people may not understand it. So let me just do a basic uh, appreciation of what it is. So government of Ghana, government of America, government of America, Sierra Leone, South Africa, every, every country borrows, all right? Now, when you are going to borrow and it's not from the IMF, which is like government to government borrowing, if you like, uh, and it's from the private market. It can be private market, it can be anyone. A rich Ghanaian, like despite, can decide to lend Ghana money. A rich Nigerian, like uh, Chinibu, can decide to lend Nigeria money, lend Ghana money, lend anybody money. So there are people who have money. There are private sector people who have money. Since the end of the Second World War, that arrangement of borrowing from private sector has grown. So all those big companies in America, uh, Goldman Sachs, Fannie Mae, all of them, they lend money. Okay. So if you want to borrow money from the private market, and borrowing money from the private market is more attractive to government since Dambi Samoyo wrote her book, Dead Aid. Now, in Dead Aid, I, I forgot to bring that book. I should have. In, in Dead Aid, Google Dead Aid for me. Let me show you to them. In Dead Aid, Ms. Moyo articulated the point that this kind of government to government World Bank borrowing is not working for Africa because when we borrow, we don't have uh, pressure to pay and therefore that money is squandered. But if you borrow from private markets, you have pressure to pay, the payment terms are clear, the percentage at which you borrow is clear, and therefore you have to pay. So this issue about borrowing from the private market became attractive. What is this? Sorry. It became attractive to government. When you're going to borrow from the private market, you go to some, so you set up, you announce that you want to borrow money, okay? And then you hire some companies who must have a lot of credibility, and that's very important. Oh, I got dead aid. Thank you. So this is the dead aid. This is the book that sort of revolutionized borrowing in the world in the early 2000s. At the time, I was a, I was a graduate student in England. It was very, it's very big. The lady is called Dambisa Moyo. She's a Zambian lady, and she worked for Goldman Sachs. He's a scientist originally, and then became um, a financial consultant. So Moyo put up this book and called it Dead Aid, and says why aid is not working and how there is another way for Africa. Uh, proactive, this, that, that, that. Okay, so she explained why aid is not working. And she said aid is not working because there are no terms governing the aid. And it just comes and is zero and government squander it. And she even alleged that there's an aid industry where some people in America and other places benefit from the aid that comes to African countries. Okay, so this is the book that actually revolutionized the world in the early 2000s and sort of got Africa and third world countries to actually go to the euro market and borrow. Okay. Now, so when we are borrowing from these markets, you hire companies that must be credible, who will go to their, their people and say, Ghana is selling um, bonds. That's how they say it. Uh, how, how much? Ghana wants to raise two billion. So it's issuing two billion bonds. People are going to give Ghana two billion, and Ghana is going to owe those people, and the percentages are agreed upon. Ghana then gets companies who have clients who can give us that money. So you have to be credible. If I set up a company today and it's called uh, Paul Adomoshi and Good Evening Ghana Associates, and I say I'm a financial manager, everybody will be laughing at me. Because really, no, no I, don't, I don't know anybody. Nobody's going to borrow money through me. So the people who are giving money, those who are lending the money to Ghana, they lend it through these people. And these people, when they lend, they, they give the money to Ghana, they charge Ghana a percentage for it. But why not? The, the point is, is my company is my clients, and I've brought my clients to buy your bond. And so you pay me. So basically, for us who are not financeable, this understanding I think will suffice for We have a table for you that begins in 2014, but actually the first euro bond was in 20, um, uh, 2007. And uh, the finance minister's company, Data Bank, had participated in that. Nonetheless, let's look at the table over here. So this is 2014. Um, so you have transaction advices. Uh, who, who are divided into these categories. Transaction advisors are divided into joint lead managers, co-managers, sub-co-managers, international counsel, that is lawyers, and local counsel, okay? All right, so let's move on. In 2014, which is the President Mohammed's period, Ghana went out to borrow money. And this is the order in which the money was borrowed. These are the people uh, who we hired to be the middlemen to help us to borrow the money. The first group of people were called the joint lead managers. They included Deutsche Bank, and then Barclays Bank, and Standard Chartered Bank. The next group of people is called co-managers. They included, guess what, Data Bank, EDC Stock Brokers, and SAS Investment. And then you had sub-co-managers. It didn't apply in 2014. International Council was Dentons, and local council was JLD and MB. Okay, move to 2015 then when the Setekpes administration and the Ministry of Finance 
took more money, borrowing from the international market. Who were the lead managers? Deutsche Bank, Barclays Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, and then co-managers EDC and SES Investment. There's no data bank in 2015. There was data bank in 2014. Uh, Sub-co-manager does not apply. The lawyers were Dentons and JLD, okay? Now, 2016, uh, borrowing. Bank of America uh, were the lead managers. City Standard, City and uh, Standard Chartered Bank. I see securities enter the first time in the analysis. I see securities comes in in 2016, uh, still under Setepe. Um, sub co managers didn't apply. Dentons were still the lawyers. JLD and MB were also there. And then you come to 2018. Now, in the intervening period between 2017 and 2018, there's a parliamentary document that I'll show to you in terms of what happened. Why did the Ministry of Finance add two more uh, advices in terms of co-managers to make it five for the local system? I'll, I'll show you that in the parliamentary answer. But let's focus on this one. We are now in 2018. Kenneth Wiata is now Minister of Finance. Okay, so who are the joint lead managers? Bank of America, City, JP Morgan, Standard Chartered, Data Bank, Fidelity Bank, IC Securities. Note that IC Securities maintain their position as co-managers in 2016 under a different political arrangement and also in 2018. Note that Data Bank also maintained their position from 2014 as co-managers and come back again in 2018. In 2014, Data Bank was not selected by Ken Oferata and the MPP administration. They were selected by John Dramani Mahama and Seth Tekpe NDC administration. In 2018, of course, the government Government is the MPP government. Ken Oferata is Minister of Finance. Data Bank reappears there, not for the first time. That's important because Mr. Kwesi Chedakwa said, you can't come into government and set up a company. He said that I can play that back again. He said, set up a company. I want to educate our people to see that the, these companies were not set up because what Kwesi is saying is true. You can't set up a company when you become minister and then use it to do business. That's totally illegal. We understand that. But we have to, to, to correct it and say what it is. This is. These are companies who had been set up before, who had done the same business before. I'll be showing you a bigger picture of uh, the history of these companies. So that's 2018. Data Bank. Fidelity Bank, IC Securities. Now, in the parliamentary document, I'll be showing you how much each of these companies earn. Because Ken Oferata told Parliament that, and we have the hands out here. We'll, we'll show you how much they earn from this borrowing. They, they, earn, they earn good money. It's okay. We earn someone. A year. Paul Adum Ochre, in Chirimua, or the Ebaye, and our son, and you were near a Tino, and in a Brofono El Coswa, and yet as you have a dear, 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 like, like page, page, you know. Now, if you want me to announce, you don't know what to announce when you be. Ah, right. Me, that's it.